Normally, it's just tourists visiting Berlin in August. But no one now has time to wait for the cooler months, the slow, simmering problem of Brexit threatening to boil over. When he entered number 10, Boris Johnson's team briefed out that he wouldn't be imitating his predecessor, Theresa May, and traipsing round European capitals in an attempt to get a deal. And yet... Here he was, Berlin before Paris tomorrow. Of course, no one thinks that the intractable knot of Brexit will yield to the light tug of a couple of quick visits. Among some German politicians, though, there's suspicion of what this visit is for. Our impression is that he is determined on hard Brexit. That's what he's campaigned for, that's what he has advocated for, and that he's coming here to do a show so that he can afterwards put the blame on the EU and say, look, I tried, even though he didn't, uh, and can say, look, it's not my fault, it's the EU again, look who, how they are. So it's a show, it's a tour uh, for the British people and his followership, it's not for getting a deal. Three decades ago, Berlin was where one Europe collided with another. If modern Berlin has a theme, it is overcoming division. You can't understand the EU's position without understanding that of Germany. And you can't understand Germany without thinking for a moment about the journey that Angela Merkel herself has been on. From growing up in communist East Germany to 30 years ago, literally seeing these walls come down. Now, in the twilight of her chancellorship, she's always said she's not about to see new barriers going up in Europe. At the offices of Bild, Germany's most popular newspaper, the morning editorial conference is discussing a topic to try to avoid. The sense here is that the Angela Merkel they know well, who can't abide chaos, who yearns for consensus, will somehow find a solution. I would predict that we will end up with something that's still a no-deal Brexit with so many um, side agreements that is basically a, a deal Brexit, a Brexit deal. That is the classic way of Angela Merkel not giving in, but giving in. You know, uh, uh, saying what everyone wants to hear and doing what uh, most Germans want. You might expect to hear that view reflected in this modern temple to making money, the Berlin Stock Exchange. But for many, even hard-nosed, commercially driven Berliners, there are higher principles at stake. Just as Brexit is about identity in Britain, so it is in Germany too. We feel much more comfortable uh, being in the EU than being German. If the question is, do you sacrifice, are, are we willing to sacrifice some of our commercial advantage to keep the integrity of the EU, to make sure that the EU as such has a future? The answer has been, and if you read the papers, the industry confirmed that, we rather do the commercial sacrifice, but we make sure that the integrity of the EU is intact. And that's a misjudgment uh, from both sides. Um, when I say from both sides, in particular, I would claim uh, from the UK, who uh, uh, believes that we will bend to commercial pressure. This is not going to happen, in my opinion. And so to the press conference. The Prime Minister tried to convey optimism using a phrase Angela Merkel coined at the time of the migrant crisis. We in the UK want a deal. We seek a deal. And I believe that we can get one. We can do it. Wir schaffen das, I think, is the, is the phrase. But clearly... <laughs> but clearly, we cannot... We cannot accept the current withdrawal agreement. Could the backstop be removed? Angela Merkel, the consensus lover, didn't give a flat no. Instead, a tight deadline for Britain to explain how. Man hat gesagt, die finden wir wahrscheinlich in den nächsten zwei Jahren. Aber man kann sie vielleicht ja auch in den nächsten ähm, 30 Tagen finden. Warum nicht? Dann äh, sind wir einen ganzen Schritt weiter und äh, das. Da müssen wir uns uh, anstrengen, dass wir so etwas finden. Okay, Boris Johnson accepted this 30-day challenge. 
but as Berlin packed away its welcome, he must know that in Paris tomorrow, he's likely to get a far less accommodating reception. David Grossman in Berlin there. So can a solution to the backstop be found in the next month or so? Or is this the start of the great blame game? Daniel Hannan, former MEP and the leading figure in the Leave campaign, joins us, as does Simon Fraser, head of the diplomatic service until 2015, who since leaving has been speaking up in favour of remaining in the EU. Daniel Hannan, let's start with you. I mean, just a matter of weeks, really. Is there a viable alternative mm. to the backstop that could be uh, sketched out in that time. Talk us through it. Sure. First of all, I'm a current MEP. There are very few Conservatives, but I, I am one of them. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I mean, it's important to understand why this is such a big deal. And one way of putting it is, imagine that any other country had approached the EU and asked for a trade deal, like, say, Canada, which recently did so. Suppose that the EU had said, yeah, yeah, we're happy to talk about a trade deal, but we have two preconditions. First, we will forever control your trade with everyone else, with the US, China, India, you will have no input, you'll be part of our customs union. And second, we will have administrative and regulatory control of Quebec. Oh, and by the way, after all that, we might not give you the trade deal. I mean, no serious country could sign up to these terms. So, so what's the fix? Come well, on, that's, I, I, that's what we're after. Well, the, the, if there is, is short if in, there in every is, sense. If there is goodwill, I think we have come up with a number of ways in which uh, we can help the EU not put a border on their side. It's clear that there isn't going to be a border on our side, right? So, so if you like, the, the, the row is about how do we allow the EU to match that pledge and not have any infrastructure on their side. But obviously the, the, the way of doing that is to have a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement based on mutual recognition. And if that can be agreed, then indeed there'd be no... But obviously that's not going to happen in the next month. So you're talking about rolling over single market and customs union terms while that's worked on? Because some people have talked about that on the, on the Leave side. No, I wouldn't do that. I think we've got a number of proposals, quite granular and detailed proposals. From, for example, there have been some worked out by Prosperity UK, which is not a Leave organisation. It's, it's you know, proposals drawn up mainly by customs experts and, and the politicians behind it were mainly people who voted Remain. But there are technical, practical solutions. But the, the question is, is there the goodwill? Because effectively what the European Union is now saying, and this is a highly illogical position, is unless you do all of these things which we claim are about avoiding a, a border, we will put in a border. And no, when you hear that what, as the negotiating position, you, you've got to wonder whether gets, it's really being negotiated in goodwill. One gets that contradiction, but equally uh, I'm just struggling to see how something could be brought together even in heads of agreement what, what terms, I'm saying is, when it, trade deals take so long. Sure, so but it's a question of whether there is goodwill, and that is for the EU to determine. It, it, there is plainly goodwill on our side. Simon Fraser, doable, do you think? What, to now to, to sort to out come to some sort of... Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say the comparison with other countries is, is false one because they aren't leaving the EU, they weren't members of the EU, so they're and they don't have land borders with the EU in the case of Canada. So it is a complex situation, let's face it. Um, I don't know the answer at the moment. This, is, this was not a visit. This is not a moment at which we are getting answers. This is the exploratory beginning of a possible process of negotiation. I actually think that this government, although it's prepared to do a no deal, would be much better served by getting a deal and having an orderly exit. And it was interesting because Boris sort of, Johnson and that. Boris Johnson said that, and the sort of tone of the visit was quite interestingly sort of reasonably positive. The question is on substance whether there's been any change, and there hasn't because this wasn't a substantive discussion. And in his letter to Donald Tusk uh, about this, when uh, Boris Johnson said we need to get rid of the backstop, he made no new proposal about what the alternative arrangement could be. So he's accepted it's our responsibility, but he hasn't put any ideas forward. Right, and just in terms of what was being briefed out over recent weeks mm. about we're not even going to talk to them unless they drop the backstop, clearly nonsense. I mean, he's, he's gone to have the conversation, hasn't he, to try and pull a deal to but, get, look, together. Look, it is, of course, much better to have a deal than not to have a deal. I mean, I, I hope that's common to, to almost everybody. We want to have amicable relations with our immediate neighbours. We want them to prosper, right? I, uh, one of the consequences of a, an acrimonious split will be that uh, it, there will be implications for the strategic unity of the West, which is in no one's interest. So I hope that we can find a way through this if possible. But it's got to be on the basis that we are treated in the same way that any other neighbouring country would be and not victimised. It was very interesting to listen to the... Uh, German stock exchange guy on your video there saying, well, you know, for us, the integrity of, of Europe means 
making our people poorer for the sake of making a departing state even poorer. Well, really? That's going to strengthen the European ideal? A, a club that has to threaten people for leaving is not a club, it's a protection racket. So but in its I, own terms, a very strange afraid. argument. Uh, can I just uh, put to you a point that uh, uh, in your former incarnation, yeah. a government might have been saying to you, look, it's pretty obvious, following three meaningful votes, that this package, as it's currently configured, simply cannot get through Parliament. Yeah. What can you come up with? And what can you come up with? Clearly it can't get through Parliament. And, and the question that Boris Johnson will be asking himself today and tomorrow is, is there an opening for a negotiation with the EU which I think may deliver something which I can get through Parliament? Now clearly they're not going to give up the backstop completely. And by the way, to talk about it as victimising the UK I think is complete misrepresentation, but let's set that aside. They're not going to give it up completely. The Germans clearly I think are in the business of looking at whether some flexibility around how it's managed, the governance of it might help. I'm not sure whether the French are. Let's see what happens tomorrow. He will come back having made a judgment about whether and how much he should invest in this negotiation. So let's see. Uh, I think he still will keep the option of no deal on the table in his mind and he'll still be want, want to make sure that he can blame the EU how, for it if it happens. How worried would you be that somehow against expectation there is goodwill on their side, sure. there is some movement, there is, there is something that can be done yeah. and you then have MPs in your own party who say we're not going to vote for any sort of deal, mm. we want WTO terms, and well, Boris Johnson still can't get it I through. Mean, there may be a few like that, sure, sure, but I think it's, it's worth noting that the Conservative uh, MPs in general, including the, the sort of ERG, have swallowed a great deal already, so there's a lot in the rest of the withdrawal agreement that they don't like, that no one would really like. You know, I don't think any international tribunal would uphold the £39 billion figure, for example. I don't think anyone thinks we actually owe that sum of money. There is a, an asymmetric arbitration mechanism, a continuing role for the ECJ. There's two years of non-voting membership where we're subject to it. So there's an awful lot in there that they'd be gritting their teeth and putting up with. Only that the one issue that they absolutely can't compromise on is the backstop, and for a very good reason, which is that it, it causes us to to leave a, an arrangement where we have an exit clause, i.e. EU membership, and replace it with one where there is no exit clause because it could be... But these are the very people who said that the trade deal with the EU was the easiest I thing know, to do ever. Let's, so let's not you know, revisit... The, the backstop is not the solution. It's the insurance policy but, if the solution isn't reached. But Simon Fraser, can I just pick you yeah. up there, just, just pushing yeah. forward, if there are MPs who aren't going to yeah. vote for this. Uh, to what extent do you think the German government in that leaked memo mm. last week or the French government have just come to the conclusion that actually you could make a concession, but even then Boris Johnson couldn't deliver. Well, I think what's clear is therefore no deal is inevitable. They won't make a concession unless they're very sure or confident that he can get it through Parliament. So there's a bit of a game of chicken on both sides, if you like. That is true. Um, I think it's very much an open question whether there is a possibility to find common ground. It's too soon to say. I think it's a big challenge. Uh, because we haven't come forward with new substantive proposals on how it will be solved. If in the next 30 days, uh, now we've got this 30 days that have entered into the Notional, debate, yeah. if he comes up with something new, Boris Johnson, then maybe it's game on, but let's see. Do you think he started in the wrong place? Some people saying he should have started with Ireland because ultimately this is all about what Ireland can actually wear in terms of a... A, a guarantee on the I Good mean, Friday agreement. I, 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 it, ultimately, it's for the Irish to determine whether they're going to do this and, and whether they... I mean, I'm, I'm, I can see that if, if you're an Irish politician, you may prefer a worse deal but be seen as the defender of the national interest against the old enemy than, as a, than getting a slightly better deal but being the West Brit who sold out. And so that, 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 that is the, the internal dynamic uh, for them. But, you know, I... I come back to saying I think Britain has, has gone the extra mile already. I mean, if the EU had accepted Theresa May's offer at Salzburg, where we were saying we'll accept all when of the environmental say, stuff all the, and we'll pay for the privilege, you know, that was an extraordinary offer. Any other country that have bitten their hands off, instead of which they held out for more, they demanded well, something that I think is unacceptable, not just to Parliament, but to everybody. The language... Uh, 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 and they, they now risk, I'm afraid, the losing language the language you're using there does sound to me like the language of blame. I, I would much rather that there be a deal. The EU is made up of countries that are old friends of ours, are our suppliers and our customers, and there will be a deal sooner or later because we are the EU's single biggest export destination. But it would be much better for it, happen, for it to happen before Brexit rather than for it to, have to happen afterwards. That's what the, the dilemma is. Simon Fraser, final word. Is, is this now a blame game? 
Well, uh, risk becoming a blame game. I hope it's not a blame game yet. Uh, I, I think that um, to say that the blame lies all on the side of the EU is wrong. I mean, we're the ones who created the issue. We negotiated with them. 27 countries negotiated a deal with us. We weren't able to pass that deal in Parliament. So it's fair to say the onus lies with us to see if we can resolve the problem. I hope we make a serious effort to do so. I agree that a deal is far better than no deal, although, of course, I would have preferred no Brexit, but that's another matter. All right. So I'm Fraser Daniel Hannan. Thank you both very much indeed.